Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. And uh, I'm very excited today. Uh, we have a very, very, very special guest. Uh, we have uh, Penny Faroji today with us. Uh, and uh, today I had a long discussion with her just before starting this recording. She's a very uh, well-known Vedic astrologer uh, all, all, in all the places. And she has uh, some amazing uh, experiences on spirituality and astrology and uh, meditation and so many things which uh, she told me uh, in the last one hour. I was really amazed uh, to see her uh, divine, uh, how God has actually helped her and uh, played uh, as a divine intervention in her life. So, uh, Namaste Penny Ji. So, today, we, today is also a very auspicious day of Ganesh Chaturthi. And we are very lucky to meet on this day for the first time and record. So uh, today, uh, please uh, enlighten us. Like she told me that she has a presentation which she will use to uh, show a person's nature and which can give us some good pointers uh, pertaining to a person's profession. Not directly necessarily, but yeah, it, it gives us a good idea. So... Uh, welcome, Penny G, and the stage is all yours. Uh, please. Uh, <laughs> Thank and you. Yes, uh, before you begin, sorry, uh, you. Uh, I will pin uh, Penny G's website down in the description section. There's some amazing content there. Please uh, go and watch. Yes, madam. Thank you. It's such an auspicious day. I was delighted. Uh, very serendipitous when I realized it would be on this particular um, Chaturthi Ganesha. Yes, yes. So um, when Babajit and I first met, he suggested that people are always, of course, interested in career. And so I thought about career is huge. It's such a vast topic. There's no way you know, to pin it down. And because of the proliferation of careers, it's become much more difficult, you know, back in even a hundred years ago, uh, it was much easier. There was much more contained. And certainly in India, with the, you know, the, the caste system, it was much more clearly defined. But now it's all over the place and people change careers all the time. And I always get questions. Can I be independent? Can I have my own? You know, it's just, yeah. So what we want to try to do is get a, a, an idea of what a person might be inclined towards. Maybe it will it will pin the career, or maybe it will pin some very interesting hobby, something that they you know they like to do. Uh, it can can be very useful in counseling them if they're unhappy in their career, but they need to do that career. Well, here's these other interests that they can develop on the side. So there's all kinds of possibilities with this, and it's it's disarmingly simple. Nothing's ever simple when you get right down to it. There's always complications. Um, and it resides in this idea of grahas and kindras. So why grahas and kindras? Well, first of all, we know that the kindras are the stations of the sun. They're very powerful. They're power points. Yes. Uh, it's said to be an extra shakti when grahas are in kindras. We all know, well, maybe we don't all know, but there are, are digbala places where grahas get a special strength, but that's when they're in kindras. Yes. And I'm going to simplify this and I'm going to be using equal house, you know, and you can, if you're more advanced and you want to ask, well, you know, should I use Baba? Let's just leave that for now. Okay. I'm just going to keep it simple. So why grahas and kindras? Well, first of all, because they have this kind of idea of activation of strength. Could they actually be career indicators? Well, maybe, but they will they're important because of what any graha in Kendra is going to do. What is that? Well, if we think about it, um, when we think about career, we're usually talking about the 10th Baba, right? Yes. 10th Baba is all of our actions. It's also our Nitya Karmas, our daily Karmas. It's not only career, but career is a big piece. And of course, of tantamount importance to everybody who's in the samsara, they need to be doing something uh, in order to secure themselves. So it's also an arta stana, yeah. the most developed of the arta stanas. But then there's also this idea, is that the only place where we can look for career? Well, in South Indian Shastra, actually, 
The first bhava is considered as much as the tenth. Why? Because it's the prakriti. It's the nature of the person. So any graha that is activating the first bhava, the, the karaka nature is going to go right into that essence, the DNA of the person, so to speak. And it's going to uh, create a certain tendencies that they would gravitate towards. So um, in fact, the first and tenth bhavas have a lot in common in terms of meanings. So the first bhava is also rise in life, reputation in life, uh, even fame in the first bhava, charisma in the first bhava, all of these things can play in. So the activation of these two bhavas uh, can play into this idea of what floats somebody's boat, you know, what they would, they're inclined to do, and then what they are doing. You know, so there's an intersection of those two, and that's what this particular little exercise, so to speak, of grahas and kindras is all about. So any graha in the first is going to activate the prakriti. Any graha in the tenth is going to activate what the person will be seen to be doing, what the person actually does, their karmas. But if you have a graha in the seventh, it also activates the prakriti. And if you have a graha in the fourth, it activates the, so to speak, kriya or kanma. That's why a graha in any kindra will either activate the first or the 10th, or if it's a graha with special aspects, we'd have to consider that as well. Yes. Yeah. So if we look at Jupiter, for example, we see that Jupiter obviously in either of the Triconosanas is going to activate the first. But Jupiter here and here will activate the tenth. Yes. Now, if Mars is in a Kendra, there'll be uh, the situation depending on the Kendra, like here, where we'll activate both the tenth and the first. Oh, yes. And likewise, Saturn will activate the 10th and the 1st, and so on. There'll be other places like that. So the power of Mars and Saturn in the Kendras, and which is why Shastra normally likes them out of the Kendras, <laughs> is they have a very pervasive effect. They're going to influence where they are and two other Kendras. Very pervasive influence. But for our purposes, we're not so worried about, oh, they're malefics. We're thinking about what would they how would they impact the way a person would tend to uh, act or what they may tend to do? So there's going to be a, a, a general sort, we could say. We could say that the benefics activating the kindras will tend towards careers that are more humanistic. Okay. Because they're benefics, you know, so they they tend towards things like the arts. They tend towards things like helping people, medicine, but not technical medicine. You know, this is interesting. Sometimes you can see in a doctor's chart um, the uh, humanistic grahas particularly strong. And these, those might be the doctors who are maybe psychologists or psychiatrists okay. or the ones that have really good bedside manner or who may be called healers, you know, that yes, they're a doctor, but they're also the doctor that really listens, that's really there. Whereas when we get to the other, you get more the surgeons or the ones that, you know, are in and out real fast. <laughs> you may not be that yeah. yeah. about interacting, you know? Um, so we could include doctors in humanistic, um, but nurses for sure, you know, the, this sort of professions, and also advisors and counselors, any of those things. And then anyone dealing with what we call mula, uh, the plant kingdom. So florists and growing things and farmers and um, all of that, teachers, of course, very humanistic uh, professions, even writers, um, all manners of the arts, you know, performing arts uh, or um, acting or singing or recording industry, all this kind of thing. So then, uh, as I mentioned, we don't want to think only in terms of malefics, bad, benefics, good. We're looking at them much more at the, 
the how they would cultivate the prakriti and also the career. So the malefics tend to indicate more um, inanimate, datu is called, inanimate things. Okay. So these are going to be more your, your technical uh, professions. So computers, for example, um, again, there's a lot of crossover. What if you have web designers? You know, then, then you may have a mix, right? Yeah. Uh, the, the technical and with the artistic. Yeah. So this is where it can get more complicated. But for a very simple approach, you know, your scientists, you know, the ones that are in the lab with the test tubes. Mm -hmm. So I, I had an experience, you know, I, I uh, uh, trained, uh, I have a degree in uh, genetics from a million years ago. And one of my first jobs was uh, I was a lab technician. Okay. I hated that job. Oh my goodness, I hated that. Just me and the test tubes. So I wound up leaving that and I wound up teaching science um, in high school. Uh, that was pre Jyotish days. <laughs> uh, and I love that, you know, so uh, there's a kind of mix in my chart in that way. So, so all of these things, you know, I'm making them black and white, but they're not. And that's why this doesn't become like the number one thing I'm gonna use for career. This is, this is like a, a step into the water, you know, wading into the water, toes are in the water. Uh, and when you join this with a lot of other things, as I'm gonna demonstrate, you'll see what I'm talking about. So machinists, you know, uh, people in um, factories, you know, um, car production, engineers, all of these kinds of things, even, astronauts, you know, these are technical. Yes. Okay, so armed with this, we're gonna just take a look at a very um, end of the seesaw, what I like to call, because as soon as you have examples that are mixed, then it's gonna be a little harder to determine and we have to call in other um, vichadas, uh, other methods of jyotish to make those different, make that um, clear which way they may go and other techniques for looking at professions. Okay, so uh, the first chart I wanted to talk about is rather clear in that we're gonna leave out Rahu Ketu for the moment, uh, although Rahu absolutely uh, is part of the mixture in certain careers. So what I'm about to talk about now is uh, my teacher, I studied for many years still do with um, Hart Defoe, who is the author of Light on Life, I think one of the finest books on um, on Jyotisha. It's one of the reasons I love it is um, pretty much everything there is directly from Shastra. Um, and if it isn't, then he mentions it. <laughs> it's not. Mm -hmm. So um, in studying with him, he's the one who introduced this particular uh, concept to us when he introduced the whole idea of how to deal with profession. And what he did was, I thought, very ingenious. He took different groupings of grahas and uh, gave us what the possible careers might be with those groupings. And, you know, I, I'm not going to be going through all of these many, many, many permutations. I'm using this as something to just kind of ping you all out there to play with this, to experiment with this uh, in your own way. And so in this particular chart, because we have, uh, leaving out Rahu Ketu, only humanistic grahas here. We have Venus and yes. Jupiter. Yes. Then we are gonna start to think, is he a dairy farmer? You know, is he a landscape designer? Is he a nurse? Is what might he be? So this is where you have to start to call in uh, your skills in Jyotish in general. So one of the things you're going to have to evaluate is the level of the chart. And what do I mean by the level of the chart? Well, first of all, can this person even utilize the combinations they have? So number one is always we need to look at the Lagna Lord. The Lagna Lord is the utilizer. It's the graha that navigates us through our life. And if you look at this, you're going to be very worried. <laughs> this Lagna Lord does not look like this person could navigate their way out of a paper bag, you know, let alone life. However, this is not 
the seminar to talk about or the podcast to talk about utilization and all the ways that we can see it. So there is definitely utilization here due to a particular yoga coming out of uh, Paladipika Mantrishvara called a Parvata yoga, a yoga of borrowed strength. I'm not gonna go into it, you're just gonna have to take my word. He has enough utilization, believe me, to be able to utilize auspicious combinations that might be here. So, okay, he can utilize these humanistic grahas, but the big trick for this in determining which way this might go is dasha sequence. Yes. So one cannot really look at a chart without considering dasha sequence. Now, that's an overarching statement, and I always have to bite my tongue, because anytime you make a statement, there's going to be exceptions to that statement. Yes, <laughs> yes, always. always. So, in fact, I was uh, talking to Babaji about the fact that every chart is unique. It's like a snowflake. There's not two snowflakes the same. They all have triangles and diamonds, and, or if you do South Indian squares, but they're just unique in every way. Yeah. And so we have to understand the patternings in the chart. What garden, it's like an ecosystem. What is this garden gonna be able to grow? Can I grow tomatoes in this garden? Well, you're not gonna be able to grow tomatoes in every garden. Mm -hmm. uh, some they'll flourish and others they'll, you know, should I buy a, you know, a designer rose bush and put it in my garden? Well, it might be a bad investment in some gardens. You don't get enough sun, it's not from the right direction. Charts like that. A particular combination that will be true in this chart may be completely different in another chart, depending on what else is going on. So what's going on here? Well, we could see by the Janma Nakshatra that this person was born in a Mercury Dasha, which means that he's going to run K2. And then at some kind of prime of life, in this case, around 20 years old, he's going to run a Venus for 20 years. Yes. 20 years in that Venus. And if you're, uh, if you're quick on your yogas, um, you would see that Venus spearheads major Rajivas in this chart. Beautiful. Along with, of course, the potato on the table, as my teacher likes to say, the Malavya Yoga yes. sitting there. And it's a powerful one because it's not only Swarashi, it's also Dikbala in the fourth Bhava. Yes. And the Venus is, st is stabilized only, actively stabilized only. I do see that it's flanked by malefics, which is, we could say, destabilizing in a way. But the act of stabilization, it's only Jupiter. And it's a powerful Jupiter. Why? Because it's retrograde. That's another discussion. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff running around about retrograde brahas that maybe we'll do a podcast on sometime because there's a lot of misinformation out there on that. For now, we're going to go with that Jupiter has mojo. It's powerful. So this provides a lot of, of um, Shakti to that Venus who honestly doesn't need any more than it has. It's pretty strong. So what would a Malavya yoga intimate? Well, it's often it's a yoga, you know, the, the yoga's name for people from Malava, from South India. That's the origin of Malavya. There's some idea that this is a, a spiritual yoga because it's from the Mala, from the necklace. No, that's that's not seeing the diacritic in Malavya yoga. It's not Mala and it's not Mula, which is filth. It's Malava. And from that, that district in India, very graceful, artistic people, all of that kind of idea. So it, it's, it kind of amps up the Kataka nature of Venus in that way. And so here we might think, hmm, this is a high level chart. There's preeminence in this chart through the Raj Yogas. So maybe this person is not, you know, a gardener or a florist or something. Maybe they're well known. And so 20 to 40 years old, well known, uh, Venus Dasha, uh, maybe it's something for the arts, especially in a contemporary person. Maybe we could go in that direction. Well, is there confluence? Is there other indicators in the chart of creativity? Well, where do we see the arts? or creativity. Well, one place is the fifth bhava. The fifth bhava, the inclinations of the mind, creativity, music, poetry, producing, all this kind of stuff. Um, writing, novels, fiction. 
very strong fifth bala. We also see that Venus rules the 11th bala, Swarashi Venus, 11th Lord. 511 axis is kind of an entertainment creative axis. Yeah. So another indicator perhaps. We see there's going to be money in this chart because Venus is the Lord of the 11th and Jupiter is the Lord of the 9th and they both have very strong condition and Venus Dasha runs and you don't get a lot of money really as a landscape architect or you know this or that you know so again the level of the chart is going to push in this direction of this may be someone and also a strong third baba the Lord of the thirds in the third yeah I know yeah. it's good but it is also exalted so there are these indicators. And obviously, as I said, you're not gonna rely on just this one technique. It's gonna be evocative. It's gonna make you explore the possibilities of the combinations that might give you arts. This same combination could give you teaching or counseling because Jupiter and Venus are both Acharyas, Deva Acharya, yes. Shukra Acharya. So, but once again, when you see the level of the chart, unless it's someone like, you know, like Freud or Young or you're really famous in, in counseling, um, the more Kaladesha Patra, you know, he's an American man and about the time that he was born, you know, this kind of rise in life in a Venus Dasha would more um, uh, intuitively be in something like the arts. And so, in fact, this is Christopher Reed. And so Christopher Reeve, Superman, right? Wow. Uh, we'll also, if you explore this further, the Jupiter-Venus combination does give a more of an entertainment type artist rather than a Jupiter-Mercury um, combination, which gives more of like a Shakespearean actor or like a serious actor. Okay. So, so he would have liked to have thought of himself as a serious actor. Uh, but frankly, he's known for, you know, like the Superman role, a more sort of cartoonish thing rather than something you get an Academy Award for, you know, rather than Laurence Olivier or someone like that. And so there's this kind of nuance we can see. So um, hopefully there's time to show the opposite kind of chart. So that's the idea here. Okay. So we thought equal opportunity for Datu, right? So let's look at a chart where we have malefics and only malefics. Okay. And the same was true, you know, we had Rahu Ketu. And so I said, we're ignoring them. <laughs> um, but here we have bona fide only the malefics. And again, we can, here's a case where we actually are going to use uh, Rahu because it figures into uh, the particular combination we're gonna look at. So we're gonna say the combination in this chart is a more complex combination. As I told you, my Guruji was sort of genius at doing these groupings. And Mars and Saturn on its own can give all kinds of proliferation. It could be builders, it could be military, it could be medicine, it could be a number of things. Adding in Rahu though, um, uh, my teacher said it can be a scientific bent. Why? Because Rahu gives the cutting edge idea. And scientists are generally cutting edge, mm. right? Yes. And so the combination of Mars, Rahu, um, Saturn, when you see it in a chart, this is not always, you know, for the benefit of all your wonderful listeners. Again, this is not meant to nail something. And it isn't that every scientist has to have this combination. I just, I, I really do want to step back and say this. There's a, uh, a kind of adage from uh, palmistry. You know, so if a person has it in their palm, it will likely be in their life. Okay. If they have it in their palm for a certain marking, um, it isn't that if they have it in their life, they have to have it in their palm. And if they have a certain marking in their palm, it's going to be that marking that gives them this outcome. It's, it's really, uh, we have to say that if it's, uh, if it's in the chart, like this, it's likely they'll be a scientist. But if they are a scientist, they may not have this combination in the chart. That's the way I wanted to do it around. If it's in the life, it could be in the chart for many other reasons, not just this reason. But if it is in the chart, 
there is maybe a bump up of the probability they would be interested in science. They may not be a scientist, but they may have an interest in science. Okay. So this particular person, again, let's look for strength. Well, I know you guys are going to possibly be freaked out that uh, Saturn is Nietzsche, but there's mm -hmm. modifications of this Nietzsche, and Saturn actually is both retrograde and it has Dikbala. And the Shastra has a certain um, interesting uh, idea about uh, debilitated grahas that are retrograde. That's also a topic for another time. <laughs> that they actually form yoga a raj yoga in fact but anyway another time <laughs> uh so this is very still very powerful here and then mars is very powerful uh because it's ucha it's not only ucha at three degrees seven it's also virgo to yeah. so it's very powerful and they have an exchange they have a party Rajana yoga so this is a dynamite chart and we have uh, Rahu acting like Saturn, acting like Mars, you know, so there's really a beautiful confluence. And then apart from that, there's a very interesting, beautiful combination here that might indicate the person researches, because the eighth bhava is a research. These are, are very strong grahas in the eighth bhava as well, an exalted moon who is also almost full very beautiful and indeed this is a chart of louis pasteur okay so i kind of rest my case <laughs> that this is a very uh, interesting little back door perhaps into indicating either a hobby you know so i, I was uh, chatting with babajit about this that um i was working with a doctor and i noticed these these uh humanistic Grahas, you know, in his kendras, along with the combinations for doctor. And I asked him, I said, you know, were you ever interested, perhaps, because I looked at when the dashas were running, you know, uh, some kind of musical band or something in the arts, and he kind of looked at me like I was a witch or something, and said, oh my God, you know, I might have gone in that direction. You know, I loved music. Uh, you know, I, I, I even started training in music, and then I realized in my family is, no, you have to be a doctor. You're probably an Indian family, <laughs> right? <laughs> doctor, uh, or, you know, yeah, I won't go there. So, uh, but he told me he maintained that interest in his life, you know, so along with, the, he, would, he would have his downtime, you know, playing the piano or the violin or whatever it was. So it's useful, not just again, for a career, but maybe as a way of, you've got a doctor like this, and you know, he's he's burning out, and you see these other interests, and say, you know, you should take some time, you know, and, and maybe spend a little time doing this. It might relax you. It might be like an antidote to the kind of stress you have in your career, because I see there's a predisposition in your chart for this as well. And so it fulfills our other purpose in Jyotish, which is not only to predict, but to also um, help a person through their trip in this particular lifetime to give them a way of coming to terms with their destiny patterns and and bringing it to a better level, bringing it to a place where they can be uh, content with this is how it is and these are the things that I can do to to enrich that. So that's our little journey into Grahas and Kendras. And um, maybe if there's some interest in this, I could follow it up with a more complex chart and show you how amazing it is to pick out, you know, all the things that that person might be interested in. Great. Thank you so much, Peniji. It has been very enlightening for me uh, because uh, I always, like every astrologer or every student of astrology knows that planets and kindles are very powerful, but uh, this was something which uh, was there at the back of my mind, but not exactly this uh, because uh, I I know that Kendra whenever has whenever a person has many planets in Kendra, then a person has a very intense life. In my opinion, that could be either on the benefic side or on the malefic side. Not as good and bad as you said, you know. So benefics have a nature to give more human experiences and. Malefics have a nature to give more uh, technical experiences, you know. So it's very uh, good uh, to know this. And uh, what I would request the audience is uh, that please you could 
write in the comments if you liked uh, our recording, which most likely you will. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want Penny G to come again and uh, share some amazing insights later on, which she already said. So that is very important for us. And what are the other things that you would love to hear from Penny G? So please pin it down in the comments and also please visit her um, website. You will find a lot of interesting things. So thank you, Penny G. Thank you once again for coming. Thank you so much for having me, Babaji. I, I really enjoyed meeting you and talking to you. It was just a total pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hope to see you soon again. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you then.